Hello everyone, this is Anna. Today I'm going to be walking you through building the Maslow 4 frame. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to run through all of our tools and materials so that you can make sure you have what you need. Um, first up, we have the raw materials for the frame. We have five eight foot long two by fours. We have two 10 foot long two by fours. We have a small piece of plywood for the uh, corner plates and inside plates. And we also have our spoil board, which might be off screen here. Um, as far as tools go, we have a jigsaw to cut out those corner plates. Um, we also have a drill for um, adding holes to the corner plates and also screwing all of the screws in to hold the frame together. Uh, this is a carpenter square, which is useful for making sure your frame is square. Not mandatory, but um, as I said, pretty useful. Um, before we started, I printed out from our website a couple of templates for the plates. We have the corner plate and also the inside plate. You can trace these, um, cut them out and trace them if you want, um, or you could just measure uh, to these dimensions with a ruler. Either way is fine. We have a uh, a pencil for tracing those uh, templates onto the plywood and also scissors for cutting them out. We have a hammer. Uh, this is for adding our uh, through bolt anchors. These are going to be the anchor points for the belts of the Maslow in each corner plate. Um, we also have uh, wing nuts to hold the uh, belt ends onto the frame and of course the corresponding drill bit to add those holes. Lastly, we have a pair of clamps for um, holding down the wood while you're working on it, as well as uh, some drywall screws to um, hold the frame together. And I think that's it, so let's get started. All right, I'm gonna start here by cutting out the uh, plates from the templates on our website. This isn't a mandatory step, it just is uh, sort of useful in speeding up the process particularly because the plates don't have to be uh, incredibly precise. Um, but if you want to measure all of the plates by hand uh, with a ruler, do it that way. It, it should work just the same. Now what I'm going to do is cut out some long strips uh, of the outside dimension of the plates. Uh, the plates are essentially uh, squares so with some modifications, so cutting these long strips was just an easy way of getting uh, rough dimensions. Now I am tracing out the layout for the inside plates. The first step showed the corner plates. Um, you're going to want uh, 12 inside plates and 8 corner plates. Again, clamping that down and cutting it out. Now I was just working with the saw that we had in the shop. You might have a better saw for this, a better system for that. And if you do, please drop it in the notes so everyone can learn what you're doing. If you increase the efficiency of this process, we'd love to know. Now I am cutting out the corner plates with that angled edge. Realistically, I should have been wearing some safety goggles for this pr process. Uh, hindsight's only 2020 if you have both of your eyes, and I'm definitely going to pick some up next time. I'm at the store. Another reason I sped this up was that this was one of the longest parts of the process. It took me nearly a full afternoon. Of course that is with recording the video as well. Moved on to the inside plates here. In a couple minutes, you'll see this video end. Our camera ran out of battery, so 
the switch to my phone. Uh, so you might notice a quick, a quick time jump. And here we are, recording from my phone now. Still in the middle of cutting out those inside plates. And the saw ran out of batteries, had to ask Bar where it was, and picked up a new battery for it. I'm sure that happens to everyone. Nice, onto the last board. Last plate, here we go. Nice. And I laid them all out just to check that I made sure I cut the right quantity. And then I hit them with a sanding block. This step is also not mandatory. I just wanted to clean them up so they're a little nicer to work with. Um, get some of those larger splinters out, I think. Bar and I are talking about iPhones versus Androids in this uh, video, so if you see me talking, it's not relevant to the project at all. And just about done with the sanding. For this next stage of the video, I changed the camera angle so that you could all see what I'm doing with a little more detail. This is me just laying out the plates to make sure I have enough, enough moving the uh, inside plates out to the side. What you see here is uh, trying to match up the corner plates with ones that have close dimensions. I did not do that great of a job of cutting these. Uh, and again, they don't have to match, but just figured it'd be a nice touch. Now I'm tracing roughly two inches onto some of the plates. What we're going to be doing is drilling holes through the pairs of plates so that the uh, anchor points will match up once they're attached to the frame. You could also probably do this after the plates are on the frame if you want, but this is just the way we picked. And now I'm going to clamp those in place and um, drill out the anchor hole. I was really concerned about drilling through the table at this step. If you have a drill press, that might be a great option for this. Nice. All right, last set of plates. Now 
Now for this stage, we're adding the anchor bolt uh, threaded bit into the hole. That way uh, our through bolts can thread nicely through these two plates. They just pound in like a nail, not bad. <laughs> Should practice with the hammer a little more, I think. Alrighty, that's about it for corner plates. Now I'm going to walk you through the layout sequence of building the frame. You take the two 10 foot sections and put it on the top and the bottom and then roughly equally space the uh, five 8 foot 2 by 4s uh, in the middle perpendicular to the 10 foot sections. I'm taking a ruler just to roughly mark uh, the center points and quarter points on those 10 foot sections. The spacing is not mandatory, uh, we just wanted it kind of equidistant. Setting up my drill and loading up my pocket with some screws. Now this part, I used the carpenter square to sort of square up the uh, parts of the frame. Again, this is not mandatory either. The Maslow 4 can take uh, measurements of each anchor point, so if your frame isn't square, that's going to be okay. Um, I just wanted it to be a little, a little square for structural purposes. Dispersing the corner plates to all four corners. Oops, forgot to kneel on the plate as I drilled it in. Each plate uh, takes four screws, uh, two in each of the corresponding uh, two by fours. You can see the layout of these screws in the drawing on our website that corresponds with these instructions. And now I'm dispersing the inside plates. I'm getting my carpenter square again, just checking that inside 2x4. The inside plates also have four screws with two in the cross beam and two in the vertical. Bar had to help me out at this stage because one of our 2x4s was a little bowed and I wanted to um, put some pressure on it so that it would uh, attach correctly to the plate. But after that first one wasn't a problem anymore, so back to working on my own. Now at this stage, the frame is pretty solid. Um, I'm gonna ask for Bar's help to flip it over. Oh, maybe that was needed to reload some screws in my pockets. Yep, there we go, flip it over. And make sure that those corner plates match up with the ones they were drilled with. Getting some more screws from my pockets. Bar had to leave, so uh, we put the spoil board on to the frame at this stage, even though you could technically do that last. Uh, 
Again, attaching the corner plates first. I don't think the sequence you attach the plates in is that important, but I felt right to do the corners first, so. Alright, just about done with all of the plates. At this point I'm centering up that spoil board in the middle. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly centered, but again, for aesthetic reasons, I just thought it would be good. When you start your Mazda 4, you can set the X and Y position um, for whatever the position of your cut or your spoil board is. For this next stage, Barr had to help me. We're tilting up the frame and then we're also going to add the through bolts through those corner plates. When Barr did the frame initially, he added them um, before he drilled the uh, corner plates on, which I think worked well. As you can see in this part of the video, we have some issues tilting the frame up so that the long through bolts can go through both plates. But luckily everything matched up well, and it just took uh, a while to get the threads all the way through. We also only had one wrench, so I was going around tightening all of them. And I'm just helping support the frame so it doesn't wobble too much. Now this frame could stay um, in the vertical position with about 15 degrees of tilt. Um, that's one of the recommended setups, but we are going to put it back on the floor at the end of this video. Um, that's because Barr's doing some more testing in the horizontal direction. Adding some wing nuts, and there we go. And that's about it.